Hello everyone, my name is DevTech, and um, today I will be teaching you guys uh, how to port forward um, for games and such. So, what do we do? What do we need to do? Let's just think about that for a second. Um, first of all, we need to check a whole bunch of stuff, which is your ports. Well, not really your ports, but uh, your your uh, configuration for your router, which I will show you in a second, which is why command prompt is open. Uh, you'll need an internet browser. Uh, any, inter any internet browser will do, generally, unless they really me mess something up royally. So any any at all will do. Even the Steam browser. I'm not I'm not even joking. Steam browser will do that stuff. Um, other than that. A little bit of patience to let me explain stuff, and turn off your turn off your software firewalls from like antivirus softwares, or uh, if you have Windows uh, higher than XP, so Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, turn off your built-in firewall, um, which you can find in the Windows security area for that particular stuff. Um, just browse around through these uh, Windows options for a bit. You'll find it, I'm sure. Uh, I can't really show it because I have Windows 7. So, all right, let's get started. Uh, if I sound a little bit of out of breath, it's because I've been pacing around earlier. So, let's do this. Right, you can see I have a CMD or command prompt window open. First of all, to start command prompt, if you are new to this, press the Windows button, type CMD or command prompt, or just command, I guess. Yeah, that'll do. And then you press enter and it will open. Not something like mine, it will look a bit more different, but whatever. I, I customize mine because I like it, and I have green text. So, what you want to do is you want to type IP config. This will open a whole bunch of text. The only text that is important is uh, just about here. You want to find wireless LAN adapter for the wireless network connection and Ethernet adapter local area connection. They might be called slightly different depending on what Windows version you're using, but generally they all look the same like this. Um, the parts you will need is the IP4, IPv4 address, which is 192.168.1. whatever your specific device IP is. This is important for at least 50% of the human population that uses um, server hosting software and has to let stuff through any firewalls. Make sure you have that address. <clears throat> I just want to point out that 192.168.1 will always, on a Windows system, be there. It's just the last number you have to remember, um, and you will need it in a bit. Um, other than that, you want to get um, the default gateway. You might want to write that down if you're new to this. If you have already done port forwarding once or twice, it, you should be able to remember the 192.168.1. So just remember the 254, at least for me, for you it might be different. It's almost never the same thing. So um, yeah, write down that number right there or right here. Uh, after that, you want to go on a browser. You can see I've already done step two here. Step two is um, you go into Google, you type in whatever game or software you want to open the ports for so you can find out what ports you need if you haven't done that already. So if I want Steam ports, I, I type this. Generally, it will be the first five options. Just make sure you look where you click. Um, it will be harder to find ports for older games. So be, be aware of that. Now you'll see here TCP or UDP needs to be open for these. Don't worry about the TCP and UDP. You're going to be opening both of them anyway. Um, because 
just because. Trust me. You'll uh, you'll thank me later. Um, you'll need these ports. For example, for the Steam client, it always uh, on official sites it will always tell you exactly what you need them for, uh, which is nice. Especially uh, like in Steam, you can say if I if I you don't really need to open these ports, for example, by the way, because they're Steam downloads. It's a download. You don't need to open ports for it. You are requesting data from another location, which wouldn't get blocked because you're requesting it. You've already opened a connection with a different device, so it's pointless to have stuff like that. I don't even know why they put it in there, but okay. Moving on. You want to go here. I'll show you how to get there first. You open a new browser. doesn't matter where you are on the browser. This is the special page for me which will all be blocked here in the center I'm sorry nobody's business but my own uh, and you want to type the gateway number you can see suggestions are popping up and whatnot so we need 192.168.1 and then your custom number in my case 254 that'll bring you to a page this isn't actually a web page it's a local page that's on your um, on your uh, router yeah now depending on what router you have which might depend on what company you're with or whether you bought your own router or whatnot whatever router you have it'll be one or two situations either you'll get a login page where you first have to log in or like mine you immediately get stuff displayed but in order to edit stuff you have to log in so either way you have to log in now to find out where your information is if you are not aware of where your information is generally if I change the picture here if I click on settings or something hmm, I'm still logged in all right well whatever um, but yeah um, generally I'm kind of sad that didn't work. Um, generally, what you want to do is you want to go um, to your router. You want to actually go to your physical router in the house and look at the back. Unless they give you like a little card which tells you your admin name and password, look at the back because sometimes there's a sometimes it will tell you on the back on a little plaque, a little card, or uh, if that's not the case and you're not sure if anyone had anything in a, in a mail or something, try using the model number. Well, not technically model number, but like, you know, serial number. The number that specifies what exact device it is, because sometimes they use that as a password. Other than that, the only thing I would be able to think of is the password might be change me or just simply password. Those are some of the defaults in case you were wondering. Um, so, yeah, you need a login. The admin thing should always be admin. The username to login should always be admin. If not, I wouldn't know what the fuck to say. <laughs> the user account is made by the company itself, so it should always be admin. So, all you need to do is find your password, log in. And you should be at a page, something similar like this main page here. Uh, it should tell you what you're connected with on the network, whether your internet service is connected or disconnected. I don't know, you might have a power shortage. How, how are you on the computer? <laughs> I don't know, your broadband username, uh, Wi-Fi status, whether it's on or not, on or off, or all that stuff. So you want to go into settings or advanced settings, um, dependent on the thing that you want to do. First of all, if you have a normal settings thing, generally we'll have something named port forwarding or firewall. Go there. Um, you'll get something similar to this, where you have like game and application, a little bar for pre-selecting and a little bar for pre-selecting and other ports that are already open for you. Um, there's a wide variety of how it will look, so I can never really tell. It really depends on who you're with, what uh, device you're using. 
but it will generally be one of two systems. Either it'll be there and you can just enter it, or it'll have a system like this one where you can select out of a list. And if you want to create a new entry to the list, you have to go into advanced settings, okay? So just to show you, um, if you want to like take, say, Alien versus Predator, and then here you can select a device, which will either be that local IP that you had to pick earlier, which was 192.168.1.65 for me, or it will have a name, like your computer name, and you just pick that, you click add, and you're done. You're done, that's it. It works, okay? Now in case it doesn't have your favorite game or program that you wanna use, um, we'll have to go into advanced settings or whatever it's called on your thing. And generally, if you have to go into advanced settings, it will be called firewall. So go to firewall and you should have a whole bunch of options or whatever, whatnot. Um, there's two choices you can make here. Honestly, I don't recommend the second choice, but I'm going to explain both of them uh, anyway. Right, so the first choice you have is add a new game. You you can add the game that you want on <clears throat> the uh, router to create an exception, you know. Um, so if you want to create a new one, you can see here is the same thing as in the normal settings for me. But I can do managing games and applications. We'll do that. We'll add a new game or application. The application name is anything you want. Um, so yeah, um, when it asks like copy an existing game or application, I always go, "What the fuck? Do you really need that? Seriously? What? What? What's the point of that? Anyone? I don't know. I don't get the point of that. Right? So generally, there'll be three or four different things here. In my case, there are three. There's protocol, port range, and translate to. In the protocol, you'll want to select TCP or UDP for whatever it says, like here it's UDP. You might not want to do that. You can just do any, and both of them will work. I just want to point out, though, that if in, in any case that you do open these ports, whether you're playing the game or not, they're going to be open. So there's really no point to being picky whether you open TCP or UDP. I've never had an issue with it. I don't expect there to be many issues with it. Um, I do want to point out that you can connect to TCP and UDP independently of each other, which means opening a TCP port on 27015 will be different and not the same as UDP um, 27015. That's a completely different port. Different protocol, same port name. Okay, just to keep that in mind. So you want to get um, port range, you want to type whatever you want against whatever you want. Uh, generally, translate to and port range will be exactly the same, although sometimes you might want to translate it to a different port if a game is being stubborn about something. So if you know, for example, 27015 is a good port, you know your friends are using it and you're like switching a lot, and you know this game wants you to be hosting on port, let's say 2000, then you can just put, you know, you can just put 2000, though 2000, 2000 is generally not a valid port, I would assume. Um, so, okay. Once you have this, you just click add, and then it will be, then it will be created in the general port forwarding sense that you can add it here. Um, you can select it here out of any of these. It should have been added there. And then you just select it as you would before and add it. Um, now the second option, and I highly, and I, I mean extremely highly recommend that you do not do this. I'm telling you now, do not do this unless you know what you're doing. Um, which I'm about to explain to you what you're doing. Every router, and I mean every router, has the option to create a DMZ. I don't know if you guys know what that stands for, but I'll explain it now. A DMZ means a demilitarized zone, which basically means, uh, in general sense, it means no combatants. 
Um, unfortunately, in this kind of sense, it means no protection, which basically means whatever computer you set the DMZ to will not have any port protection, which means anyone can come on through. It's great in a sense that you can play any game and you'll never have port issues ever again. It's bad in the sense that there is like billions of, okay, not billions, but like there's there's like several hundred thousand, if not millions of spammers who try to transmit viruses to random codes on random ports. And if you happen to be the lucky bastard who gets said stuff sent to them over a port because it happens to be open, you will have viruses. I'm telling you now, unless you have a localized software protection, like an antivirus or Windows uh, built-in anti, uh, well, built-in firewall, not anti anything, uh, firewall, then you will be literally screwed. So whatever you do, if you turn off DMZ, you're compromising every computer on your network. So never do that, ever. The only time you ever want to do that is if nothing else works. And I highly recommend you don't do it for too long. Because the longer you have that open, the more dangerous it gets. But to continue on, uh, the explanation for DMZ is you basically target one computer and that computer will have everything open. So now, for example, if I would click apply on this, anyone could connect to any port on my computer and basically fuck stuff up, which is not a good idea. So don't do it. Only do it if you know what you're doing. And I'm, by that, I mean, unless you are an IT expert, you should already know, and you don't need me to tell this if you're an IT expert, don't do it. If you really, really, really badly, you have to you have to understand how bad it is that if something bad happens, people are not going to be pleased with you for compromising all their computers. Just saying. And if you are going to use the DMZ, please warn anyone else in your family or around that is using any of your computers or wirelessly on a mobile tablet or com well phone. Those are all computers, after all. Just saying. Just warn other people before you do this. I'm not going to click apply because I'm not crazy. So you can do that just in case your game does not work at all. Other than that, you should be fine. There is nothing else to explain other than that was a very dangerous thing to do. DMZs are dangerous. Don't use them unless you absolutely have to. I'm just making you aware that the option is there. Anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. Please comment, rate, and subscribe if you feel like it. Um, and, you know, enjoy yourselves.